This is a review of the Samsung RU8000 4K UHD TV. This is the 82 inch version of the TV. Its MSRP is $3,200. In this review I'll be covering design, picture quality, HDR and SDR picture, uh, the smart interface, gaming, the internal sound quality of the speakers, the remote control, the price, and I'll give my final thoughts. At this point, I've been living with the TV for about a month and I feel confident that I can offer my opinion on it. Samsung officially calls this color Titan Gray, and it's like a brushed metal finish. Its bezel is quite small, and it has a maximum refresh rate of 120 hertz. And the screen measures 81.5 inches diagonally. The TV is 72.4 inches wide and 30, about 44 inches high with the stand. The TV weighs 105.8 pounds with the stand. I'm about 6'2", and my arms are about the same length, and they cover about the width of the television. This is a picture of the TV that was originally on the media cabinet. As you can see, it sits quite comfortably on it. This may sound a little crazy, but actually one of the, one of my favorite features of this television is that these legs have two positions. So this is the more narrow, uh, obviously, you know, let's, let's be honest, most people, or not most people, but a lot of people just don't want to deal with hanging their televisions on the wall. For this mammoth, I just wanted to keep it on the table, which I already had. Um, so um, it's awesome that Samsung actually thought about this, the fact that you, these legs can either be, there's like a slot here. So if I would have used it, it would have been barely on the table, it would have looked funny. So Samsung thought, hey, let me, let me give two options. If you have a really, really big table, you can use the wider feet. And honestly, this is super stable. And this television weighs 100 pounds, so it's hard to move. And I used, um, I had some like uh, child safety straps. So, so, you know, just in case the kids started to mess with it, but I can barely move this thing on the table. So it's super safe. Um, just wanted to point that out. And the finish is quite nice. It's kind of like a brushed metal and it has a bit of texture to it. You can see the Samsung logo there and there's a little button here. You can't really see it. There's like one little power button in here. But yeah, that's my one of my favorite features. It absolutely has nothing to do with picture quality, even though the picture quality is superb. This gives you a view of the connections behind the television. There are four U, uh, HDMI 2.0 connections and Ethernet port, a port for an antenna, optical audio uh, output, and a couple, I think a US, a couple of USB uh, ports. Uh, this TV has a has a vase mounts, so you can mount them on the wall, and it's got this nice kind of finish to it. Still plastic, but it's nice. Um, and it also has a clever uh, cable management feature where you can run the cables. I've seen that it can hold about two cables per foot, so. I have the power cable running from on one one leg and the one HDMI and the Ethernet port. I highly recommend Ethernet if you can do it. Uh, I always recommend that. And this is the uh, it's pretty thin, and it's about it's the same size, same thickness throughout the chassis. This is the remote that's included with the TV. It's uh, sleek and small, it's light, easy to hold, doesn't take up much room, has some shortcuts for Netflix, Prime, and Hulu. It really has everything you need. This TV's interface is based on Samsung's Tizen OS, which is actually based on a Linux distribution. When I first buy a television, I immediately find the equivalent of movie mode, and I highly recommend that you do the same. It's usually the, the most accurately uh, baked-in picture setting. 
Some TV manufacturers refer to it as cinema mode. I have a Vizio television that calls it calibrated or calibrated dark. Also immediately reduce the jetter and blur reduction to zero, uh, taking away the soap opera effect. As you can see, you can move the menu quite fluidly. It feels like you're using a premium tablet or a premium smartphone. I'm running the most up-to-date version of the Tizen software. Switching between apps is quick and the Samsung App Store offers pretty much all the, the most popular app options that you can imagine. It even offers some more obscure options that I would, didn't even know existed. To be honest, I haven't used many of the apps other than Netflix and the included Samsung TV app um, because I usually just use the Apple TV which is already set up. But the ones that I have used, I've used without any interruption and no issues. So the best way to describe the picture quality of the TV is striking. When I was shopping for the TV, I knew that this TV would probably not have the most uh, eye-searing HDR that a TV could offer. It doesn't have the HDR that a QLED would have or even an OLED would have. From what I've seen, it probably maxes out at like 325 nits, which is not, which is about 100 nits over what standard F S SDR would max out at. HDR was not my priority for this television. I just wanted to buy the biggest television that I possibly could that I could fit on that media cabinet. And I did. And this TV checks all the boxes. The best way to describe this TV, it's like SDR plus. It can accept HDR signals and it goes as bright as it possibly can, but it also has that white collar gamut that rivals, it's almost as good as some QLED TVs that Samsung itself produces. This TV has good color reproduction and it covers uh, about 90% of DCI P3 one calibrated according to ratings.com and it covers 67.53% of Rec 2020. I did a little digging and I was looking for other Samsung QLED TVs and I was trying to find their Rec 2020 coverage. And it was in some cases only three to 4% more than this one. agree with Drax on this. That's hardly important right now. Oh, okay. The first thing I did when evaluating the TV speaker quality was I took some measurements using my 
uh, the mini DSP mic and as you can see the red line is the are the TV speakers blue line is my home theater system that's set up with that TV my home theater system was set up in stereo mode and it consists of two tri uh, golden ear Triton 7 speakers and a 12 inch ported Poke audio sub. I'm going to clarify that the speakers were set up in stereo mode just to take the measurement. I actually have an Atmos system configured in 5.1.2 in that room. These TV speakers are some of the best I've heard on a flat panel television. They get very loud, but they lack bass, so if you're looking for any kind of rumble with explosions and such, I would recommend getting at least a sound bar. Even a sound bar without a sub would sound significantly better. This is the first TV I've ever had where the arc feature just connects to the receiver and it just works. No hassle, it just works. I've had TVs that I could never get arc to work. I recorded the following gaming clips while the TV was on its game mode, which Samsung claims uh, bypasses video processors, which helps cut down on latency. I used to game mode exclusively in my uh, dedicated home theater, but now since I bought this television, I find myself gaming here more. It's my 82 inches is plenty big, and it's actually 4K and HDR. Well, it accepts HDR signals, so and the response time feels great. I have no complaints about gaming.
So would I recommend this television? I would recommend it at the right price. I would not recommend it at $3,200, which is the MSRP. If you're looking for a TV, a very big TV, one that kind of makes a statement when you walk into a room, this TV more than accomplishes that. I feel that 80 inches is kind of like a magic number. When you pass that threshold, it takes the content that you're watching and it kind of turns it into an event. You used to need to have a projector set up to get a screen this big, but now you can have it in a traditional flat panel display, 4K and HDR, and have it in your living room for a reasonable price. And you don't have to worry about lighting and drapes and having a dark room. You can have it in the brightest room and you'll still have a good experience. This TV is currently listed at $1,800 on Best Buy and I actually got it for $1,500 initially and then about a week and a half later I saw that the price dropped to $1,400 so I got a price match which was awesome. To wrap up this review, if you're looking for a TV with a thousand plus nits or with the black levels of an OLED, this isn't a TV but if you are looking for a TV like that be prepared to pay a hell of a lot more than this one and you probably won't have a television as big as this one. So I do recommend this television at the right price, and if you're okay with not having the best HDR, but still a really good experience, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel if you found this video at all helpful. Take it easy.